All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the Praying Bowl Prayers, the morning prayer for entrepreneurs. Super excited to be here with all of you guys on this morning. Excited about what God is doing um, and just excited about just the shift in the atmosphere for what is happening um, in the body of Christ. If you are new here, my name is Nicole Cooper. I am a co-host with Shaletta Fisher. We host this call every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 6 a.m. So you can continue to be here at this time and share it with others. And this call was inspired um, by the Lord to lead me to really minister to the heart of entrepreneurs. God is calling us to rise up in such a powerful way that it's time for us to stop just existing and to start dominating, operating in a form of dominion in the areas that we've been called to lead in. And entrepreneurship is a mandate. Entrepreneurship is an assignment. Entrepreneurship is an extension of the kingdom of God's work done here on the earth. And we need to understand the power of what it is that we've been called to do so that we can take it seriously and actually be able to operate in the fullness of what God desires for us to operate in as business owners and um, as industry uh, influencers. And so it is my goal, it is my uh, desire to help us understand the gifts that we have and the assignment that is on our life and for us to understand why we can't linger in it. We can't walk in delay. We can't be in hesitation. We can't be in um, fear because this assignment is from the Lord. God has given us the gifts that we have. He's given us the vision that we have because there is an assignment attached to it for his agenda. And that is what this call is all about, is to bring the awareness of the kingdom role in the work that we do. And so this morning, what I want to talk to you guys about there is God has laid on my heart um, to really dig and lean in for us to understand the power of wealth and money. There's been a lot of taboo and fear and a shame around money in the body of Christ. There has been a religious release of poverty where poverty has been glorified and glamified where believers have an assumption that struggle is holy and that to have wealth is shame and that we are uh, that we are lovers of money and that being wealthy is means you're greedy. There's all these different attachments to these things that church and religion and just cliches that have been put on us over the years. Um, has caused a lot of us to be afraid of money. And so the Lord has laid on my heart. Um, one of the things that we'll be doing is we're going to start doing Bible studies. And I'm doing a Bible study on money. We're going to talk about money and building wealth and what that association has for the body of Christ. Uh, one of the things that... Um, I know for sure right now that is happening is God is preparing his people to be positioned for a wealth transfer. And what we have to understand about wealth is wealth comes with responsibility. It comes with knowledge. It comes with skill. It comes with insight. You have to know what to do with money when you get it. Money isn't designed to buy stuff to display your success. That's a byproduct. God wants us to have nice, nice things, but money is a tool to further an assignment. It is, it is attached to, it is attached to instructions. However, so many of us are disconnected from God's will. So many of us are not able to understand and heed the voice of God, that we're not in position to be able to understand what it is that he wants to do in and through us with money. So many of us don't get money because we don't have a connection to 
the obligation for what that money is supposed to do. A lot of us think that money is designed for us to just pay bills, buy stuff. Money is designed to further the agenda for God's will, for the move of God. Money is a tool. Money is a resource. Money also puts you in position to make decisions. It puts you in position to have a form of leadership and have a form of impact. The current economy that we live in today is called a capitalist economy. Capitalist is all about he who has the cash. Those who have the cash make the decisions. They create the laws. They build, they build the economy. Unfortunately, the body of Christ doesn't have a seat at that table because there's no economic empowerment. So we can't put our money where our mouth is. All we can do is talk about what we want done but there's no way to invest in creating shifts. And so God is calling us now to get educated on money. God is calling us now to learn how to build wealth the right way to further his agenda. What does that mean? That means that if God is calling you right now to build buildings, to go build wells in Africa, to provide water, to be able to feed a nation of people that is suffering, to be able to get some things shipped from one place to the next. Whatever moves we need to make, there requires capital. So we have to become a population of people that understand the assignment for our wealth. There's an assignment there's instructions, there's mandates on your money. As entrepreneurs, we're called to be the kingdom funders. When there's something to be done, we are the ones that are gifted with the knowledge and the insight to be able to write the checks to move an agenda forward. And so we have to understand that our assignment from God, the vision that he's given us in the area of business is a part of the process for the kingdom agenda to move the mission forward. And we've been gifted and called to be the ones that write big checks. This weekend, I had a chance to spend time with my now spiritual mom, Dr. Sharon Nesbitt powerful, powerful woman of God. I encourage every single body on this call to go and follow her and listen to her ministry. If you are not with a church home or you're in a drought and you don't know where to get wisdom and guidance from, from the word of God, and you don't know who to listen to because it's so limited out here in these streets, follow her and tap into her ministry. It is absolutely life breeding. And one of the things that I love about her is that she understands kingdom. And one of the things that they shared with me this weekend while we were in Marion, Arkansas, is they're building a city. They're building a city. They've built housing, duplexes for people to have a place to live. They're rehabbing homes. They're putting people in position of leadership in their city. It's, it's, it's a whole shift in a move of God unlike anything I've seen before from a, from a church. And I understand now fully why God is calling so many of us forth to have wealth so that we can begin to cut checks. And one of the things that we talked about this weekend was the seven mountains of influence. And this is something I want you guys to write down. And one of the things that I'm going to um, encourage you guys on is when we get on these calls, I know it's early in the morning and I know we're tired and some of us are still in bed and we're trying to get up and we're, you know, we're, we're listening in. Don't let this be something you check off on your to-do list for the day because what we're building here is not just another prayer call. It is a meeting of the minds, a mastermind for entrepreneurs to understand the mandate on our life to be prepared for a wealth transfer. This is not just something to do to check off your to-do list. It's something that you are tapped into because God is giving you assignments. He's, he's guiding you. He's telling you where to go, what to do and how to do it. And so when you get off this call, 
your role and your job is to take the scriptures and the things that we talk about and go study. This is a time to dig in and figure out, okay, God, what is my role for what is taking place? One thing that I, I realize about a lot of people is we let other people do the research and the study for us. We let other people tell us what God said. We let other people explain the scriptures and teach us the Bible. That's not going to work. You got to be so tapped in to God for yourself that you need to know when somebody is off. I might have an off day. You might get on this call and I'm saying all kind of backward stuff and it ain't right. But if you don't know the word for yourself, you're just going to be like, that was good. This is not that time to trust other people to go to God on your behalf. This is a time for you to get to God and have that divine relationship for yourself to the point where you're so tapped in that all you're doing when you listen to people like me or anybody, you're getting confirmation to what God has already told you to do. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved. You have to know the word. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. And so right now, you guys, there's so few. The Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, that many are called and few are chosen. And the reason why the laborers are few is people are too lazy to put the effort in, to get to know God, to understand the assignment. Very few people are willing to do what it takes to walk in the assignment that God has placed on their lives. And so they choose to just drift in this world until they exit out of it. But for those that hear the sound, that understand the voice crying out, that are tapped in, that are going to God and saying, God, pick me, I'm ready. That are saying, Lord, I'm going to do what you say and I'm going to surrender to your will. I'm going to walk in your ways. I'm going to follow through on the vision that you've given me. I'm going to write the vision. I'm going to make it plain. I'm going to do the work that you've called me to do. I'm going to walk in the, the anointing, the gifts that you've given me. I'm not going to bury my talent. Instead, I'm going to show up and I'm going to execute. Those who tap into that, those are the ones that God will reward with all his promises. And so this morning, one of the things that I really wanted to get into those that joined us was that it's time to rise up and put in some serious effort to understand the mandate that is on your life in the area of business because God is positioning us for a wealth transfer. It doesn't matter what the media says. It doesn't matter what you hear is going to happen. We got all kind of people making assumptions. One thing that I know is that whatever God said has to be done, will get done no matter what is going on around us. The world does not run the outcome. Every single thing that's happening on this earth, we already have the victory, the mandate from God, the assignment from God, the, the, all the things that God said has to be done, it must be done. And so for those of us that are entrepreneurs, those of us that are believers, those of us that are Christ followers, we have a different principle that we live by. The kingdom agenda is so different. It's a totally different citizenship. And one of the things that I wanna encourage everyone on this call to do is to choose your citizenship. Am I gonna hold my passport with the world and their ways and surrender to their way of doing things? Or am I gonna hold my passport with the kingdom? Am I going to walk in God's will and what he's called me to do? Or am I going to do what man's opinion says that I should be doing? Am I going to take my money and just create an image of what the world says is the American dream? 
or am I going to use my my money that I that I earn, which is really God's money, and put it back towards the kingdom agenda to elevate that assignment that is on my life? Business owners in the kingdom, our role is to be kingdom funders. We're called to invest in building buildings and making sure we have crops for food, making sure that the poor are taken care of, making sure it's a lot of things that money does in the kingdom. Entrepreneurs have the gift of building wealth. God gives us the visions for our businesses as divine assignments because they produce wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, for God has given you the power to produce wealth. Proverbs 10.22, it says, the blessings of the Lord makes a person rich and he has no sorrow with it. God desires for you to have wealth. God desires for, he says, Beloved above all things, I want you to prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. People talk about prosperity gospel. There's a lot of conflict. God wants you to be prosperous. Yes, we talk about prosperity. Prosperity is walking in God's abundance. God does not want you broke and destitute, living a life chasing a piece of paper. Instead, God put you on the earth and said, have dominion, be fruitful and multiply. If you look up the word dominion, dominion means to rule, to subdue, to manage. It means to steward over, meaning that everything that God created, he planted us here to take over and make sure that it is in alignment. The word of God says in Matthew, your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. The only way that the kingdom will come here on earth as it is in heaven is through us. Anything that God does on the earth is done through a person. And we are the people that he's doing it through. And so this morning, my prayer, this morning, my Insight, my desire for us as the body of Christ that are believers in business to have a mandate for entrepreneurship is to begin to understand that everything you've ever heard about wealth when it comes to God, we have to alter a lot of deception that has made us afraid of money. We have to get away from thinking that money is bad, money is evil, or I'm bad because I'm building wealth. Building wealth for the kingdom means that you are the bank for the kingdom, that when we need to make moves for the body of Christ, that you're able to release funds for specific projects that are gonna move the agenda forward. The beautiful thing about that is, yes, you get to get in benefit from that as well. But we're not here to worship the wealth. We're not here to glorify and put money above all things. We're here to glorify the name of Jesus. And so we're going to pray this morning for God to shift our mindset. The only thing about this I think a lot of times we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray. God, do this. God, do that. God, do this. God, do that. Help me with this. Help me with that. Help me with this. Help me with that. Your prayer has to be in collaboration with the studying of the word of God. You cannot understand instructions, guidance, insight from the word of God if you don't know the word of God. You do not know and understand. You will not know and understand his voice if you don't know his word. If you don't spend time with him, you won't know him. So if you're not actively studying the word of God, if you're not actively listening to sermons and things that are educating you on how to apply the word of God, if you're not actively making the word a part of your life, we got to change that. We have to change where we're putting our energy. We have to change where we're putting our focus. 
A lot of us will listen to all these random people on the internet all day long, talk about nothing, but we will not spend five minutes with God. You'll get on this prayer call. And you'll be on here for 30 to 45 minutes. Praise God. That was awesome. But you won't go spend time with God by yourself. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. If you're ready to go to a new dimension in him. If you're ready to experience the promises of God, the goodness of God, the power of God, you got to spend time with God. These calls are like a headquarters, a morning meeting, team huddle that we got to come together and talk about what daddy said. Where's our father leading us? Where's he guiding us? And it's a reminder that he's the CEO of your business. He's the CEO of your life. So you got to check in with the CEO. So there's a shift happening, you guys. Um, and we really need to, I'm going to pray this morning um, against the spirit of poverty, against the spirit of lack, against the spirit of scarcity, against the lack of knowledge, against the endless amount of compromise that we have over our life, over our finances, over those things. And instead that we become students of wealth, how to build wealth, that we learn how to properly manage our money, that we get our credit together, that we put ourselves in position to begin to expect Expect wealth to come our way. The only way you can attract wealth is if you're in position with the assignment that God has for you and you also have the knowledge of what you are to do with that wealth. Where is it going? What is the assignment for that money? And so there's a lot of work we got to do over the next couple of months getting our finances in order, paying attention to our income, our expenses, where are we spending our money? When bills come, making sure that we are learning how to allocate our funds, making sure that we have the proper bank account set up, making sure that we have the proper tools and resources in place. Identifying how to improve our credit if you don't have business credit, making sure you get business credit. Identifying what income streams we have coming in into our household and into our business. What are some of the things that we can do differently? How do we leverage what we have in our hand? And so um, that is my prayer. We're gonna talk about it and then we're gonna pray about it. Heavenly Father, God, I just, I thank you and I praise you and I honor you for what you are doing, Lord. And I honor you for being Lord of our life, the ruler over the earth, the creator of all. I thank you for loving us enough to send your son to die on our behalf, to continue to forgive us of our sin, to give us extended grace, mercy, to give us favor, to give us protection, to give us love, to cover us. Your word says that you cover a multitude of sins. We just thank you, Father. We thank you that in our rebellion, in our disobedience, even in our rejection of you at times, you still continue to love on us. You still continue to follow through for us. You still continue to show up for us. Heavenly Father, God, I pray over every single person on this call that has risen up with a commitment, Lord, to seek your face, to get to know you, to get clarity, to get direction, to get insight, to get guidance, to hear from you about what it is that you desire to do, where it is that you desire to take us, what is required of us in this season. I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you touch the hearts of your people. Call them out, Father. Tell them how much you divinely desire to be 
have an a intimate connection with each of your children. Let us know, Father, that you want a personal relationship with us, not one that comes through somebody else opinion of you or messaging of you, but that we get to know you for ourselves, that we get to know you, that we become students of your word, that we get to know your voice so intimately that we're tapped in through the Holy Spirit all day, every day, where we can just constantly be in communication with you. Father, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you help us to understand the divine assignment that is on our lives in the area of business. I know that you've given us this vision for such a time as this because there is a call and an assignment that we've been called to fulfill that we cannot take lightly. That you desire to bless the work of our hands that you will utilize it as the open door to build wealth. That there are things that you wanna do in and through us in our industries, calling us to have dominion and authority to be leaders in those spaces that the influence could be there, that we have the ears of the people, that we begin to be a standard in our industry, shifting atmospheres, denouncing and binding out any demonic forces and spiritual wickedness in high places, exposing things that are not of you, Father, things that are distorted, twisted, manipulative, to our industries, that we bring forth the integrity, the excellence of operations in the work of our hands, that what we do creates transformation no matter what it is, no matter what industry it is. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that we understand the significance and the importance in the sense of urgency to take action that we stop being lackadaisical in our efforts, that we stop getting caught up in overthinking and over worrying and, 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 and toxic comparison. But instead we rise up and show up with boldness, with a fierceness in the work that we do. That when we walk in rooms, we turn heads, shift atmospheres and get people to begin to tremble because they sense the spirit of the living God in that place. That any level of manipulation, or anything that they attempt to do in these industries that deceive people, that distort the whole mission for what it is that we do in the industries that we're in, that they start being exposed. God, we know that this is a season of exposure that all that's in the dark shall be coming to the light. That all the things that's been happening behind closed doors where people think their conversations are in secret, designed to tear down, destruct and destroy, that they shall be put on blast over a megaphone. We know that there's so much happening in the under rumblings of the earth. We know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but to the mighty of God pulling down of strongholds. You've given us the power and the authority to tread on the heads of demons and serpents, Father. And we know that you've placed us and planted us in position in different industries to do just that. Lord, I pray that you allow us to be educated about our industries. Let us develop a, a greater level of skill, Lord God. You talked about a skilled man will be planted before kings that we have to not just pray and ask for your guidance, but we have to do the work to build ourselves up in our industries. That we have to do things to educate ourselves, to understand how to properly navigate on this earth, even in the area of money and wealth. Lord, teach us how to be great stewards over our time, over our mind, and over our finances. Teach us how to really be a good steward over our time. Allow us to begin to put the energy and the effort in the places and the spaces that advance the mission forward. Keep us from wasting time scrolling through the feeds or lingering in conversations that are not supportive of the, of the call that is on our lives. Allow us to understand the seriousness and the urgency of the vision that we have. Teach us how to navigate in our spaces of our industries 
where we can push the vision forward and don't let any man delay or detour, detour us from the assignment. Bring forth the resources that we need so we can begin to take action. For many of us, God, the vision is so much bigger than us. We don't know where to go, where to start and what to do. Bring to us the key things that we need to advance that process. Help us to experience and understand where you're leading, where you're guiding, and where you're showing us to go. Plant people in our midst that can help support us in that vision that are qualified and skilled in specific areas that support what we're doing. Keep us surrounded, Father, by your people that are going to open up doors for us that no man can shut. God, we pray right now that everything that we need to advance the vision that you're going to, that you've given us, it shows up and it rises up. That we no longer say we can't make moves because we don't have. For we shall walk in the abundance of you. Your word says, for he that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. That whatever we ask in your name, that it shall be given. That if we seek, we shall find. We knock, the door shall be open. We ask, it shall be given. I declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that the wealth mandate that is over the body of Christ shall be upon us. Not in the name of getting rich to display our wealth out of boastfulness or out of an ego, but to advance the kingdom that we can be the kingdom funders, Lord God. Lord, there are those of us on this call that have been assigned well so that we can cut the checks to move the assignment forward. Show us where to sow our seed. Teach us how to become good tithers consistently, giving the first fruits of our increase into the body of Christ. Let us remove, God, I pray for us to overcome, be delivered from, and forgive those areas that created church hurt. The backgrounds of religious activity that we've been caught up in the traditions and things where people have said stuff to us that impacted us in a negative way that made us bitter towards you, Lord God. Heal us with those wounds. Heal us and deliver us so that we can understand that no religion represents a relationship with you. That it is about our connection to you that is the number one goal. Allow us, Father, to shift our priorities where you come first. The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto him. Teach us, Father, to make you the priority of the first part of our day. Let us make the time to read your word, study the scriptures and dig deep, get the instructions and have a prayer life. Show us what it is that we need to do, Lord God, to be in tune with you, to follow your will, to hear your voice, to be obedient to your instructions, and to surrender to your process. Father, I know that there is so much that is happening right now in the spiritual realm in our favor. Let us get tapped into what you are doing. Let us not be listening to the media and the deceptive programming that is taking place. But instead, let us tap into Kingdom TV. Let us tap into the Kingdom agenda, the Kingdom movement, the Kingdom assignment, the Kingdom shift. Lord, you've planted us on this earth to take over, to walk in authority, to subdue the land. Your word says to be fruitful and multiply. Let us build. Let us be able to multiply in the assignment. It's time for us to take over in every area, Lord God. We talk about the mandate of the seven mountains, the seven areas of influence. And we know that we're called and assigned in those different areas from family to religion, education, business, government, media, arts, and entertainment. Let us understand, Father, that our ministry does not have to be in the four walls of a church, but it's in the work that we do daily. Our congregation is to our clients. 
the people that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis that we serve. Our mission is to impact, inspire, and influence through the work of our hands. That when people encounter us, they know that they've had a divine encounter with you, Lord God. Lord, we know, we know that you have the power to do transformational work. Allow us to be the hands and the feet to provide the transformation in the work that we do. We are extensions of you, oh God, that when you bless, when you send help, when you answer prayers, you do it through people. We're raising our hands to say, pick me, Lord God, I'm ready. I am a vessel for you are the potter and we are the clay. You are the vine, we are the branches. That you said, you know the plans you have for us, plans to give us a future and a hope and not of evil. That you've called us to be a prophet to the nations that before we're in our mother's womb that you knew us. As you have us here planted, Lord God, on this earth, I decree and I declare, Lord God, that everything that you desire to do in and through us shall be done in the mighty name of Jesus. That the agenda that you have for us to fulfill, the calling, the assignment shall be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. That the assignment that is on our lives, Lord, that we will not get to heaven and miss out on all that you had for us because we couldn't hear you, but we will get to heaven living a full life and completing every assignment that you've planted in us for our destiny. That we shall fulfill every single thing on the earth that you planted us on the earth to fulfill. Lord, I pray for everybody on this call that when they leave off this call, Father, that their life is shook up. That we don't just go back to normal business as usual. That we just get caught up and life keep life in. But that we're covered by the blood of Jesus and the anointing of the spirit of the living God. That we represent the sons and daughters of you, Lord God. That the, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon us that you anointed our head with oil to preach good tidings to the poor, to bring the, the to talk about the acceptable of the, the, the year of the Lord being here. Lord, we declare right now that we wanna be the vessels that you use to create impact on the earth. Whatever things that we need to do, show us the practical way to get it done how to operate and function on a day-to-day -day basis with our time, how to become very, very smart and wise individuals with our money, how to become very diligent with the work that we do in our businesses, how to begin to build up a level of service that operates in a level of excellence that represents the kingdom. Lord, we declare and decree right now, Father, that you will do signs and wonders, produce miracles as the supernatural in and through us, in the work that we do, in the way that we live. I break the spirit of poverty and lack, scarcity in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast down every demonic force, every stronghold, every generational curse, every historical connection to bondage in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I know that for many of us, we are the curse breakers in our bloodline. We are the first in our family, the first generation to be called to produce millions. We are the first in our family to walk in the fullness of purpose and the power of God and the kingdom agenda. We are the first in our family to call forth and operate in all the promises that you have fulfilled boldly and uncompromising. Show us, Father, how to break those chains of bondage off of us from our background, from our bloodline, any curses that have been in our bloodline. Expose them and we cast them down in the mighty name of Jesus. Allow us, Father, in this season to dig deep into the scriptures, to erase all the lies, the deception, the manipulation, the limiting beliefs, and replace them with your word, God. The word says, let the mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. 
And we know that that comes through your word. Let us begin to shift our thoughts in alignment with the kingdom agenda that we don't see through our natural eyes, but we begin to see through our spiritual eyes. Lord, I know that there's a shift in the move of God happening right now that is very, very, very sacred. I ask that you protect our eye gates and our ear gates. Protect us from the wrong influences. Cut people out of our lives and remove them out of our circles that are here as deceptive seeds trying to steal the seeds that have been sown. Protect us, Father God, from people that don't mean well for us. Expose those relationships that are hindrances to us. Cut off any type of attachments that are blood sucking and are not contributing to further the mission that is on our life. Heal the wounds of those relationships that are from you, Father, that may have been tampered, may have been altered, may have had some form of conflict. Teach us how to become great communicators so that for those that are in our midst that you've assigned to us, that we understand the importance of that relationship and that we learn how to navigate in it, even when everything that we do is not always, we don't always see eye to eye, whether that is the relationships with our spouses, the relationships with our children, the relationships with our parents, the relationships with our coworkers, our employees, our staff, Teach us, Father, how to be great communicators that we can build divine connections and divine relationships with the people that you've planted in our lives. I pray that we become leaders in what we do, that we step up, we speak up, we intervene in those areas that you've called us to lead. I rebuke the spirit of fear from taking action for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power of love and of a sound mind. I pray that we stop being afraid to act and to do and to show up. And instead we show up boldly in those areas and places and spaces that you have commanded us to be. Lord, we don't take for granted that we are called, that we are chosen and that we're handpicked and selected by you. Now let us redeem the time for what it is that you desire to do in our life, that we can follow through and do that everything that you've called and assigned for us in this season. We thank you, we honor you, we glorify you for all that you are doing. We have great expectations for supernatural signs, wonders and miracles in our life. And we ask as we end this prayer, Father, that you help us have practical application simple next steps of what to do. Things like journaling what you're revealing to us in prayer. Things like looking up Bible plans on specific topics and categories so we can get familiar with your word on those areas. Things like learning how to pray and build a relationship with you. Things like understanding where to go to follow specific leaders that you've planted in the kingdom to hear their sermons that will help give us instructions and insight. So touch the ears of your people, Lord God. Penetrate the hearts of your people, Lord God. Allow them in the mighty name of Jesus to build that intimate relationship with you, that they hear your voice so clearly that they know that they have to be obedient to your assignment and to your directions. So we surrender this all in your precious and holy name, thanking you, honoring you, glorifying you, and declaring that you shall do great and mighty exploits in our name, in your name, through us, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I pray that you guys are um, able to listen and receive this. I'm going to send out the replay. We do put the replays to these prayers um, at bizismyministry.com where you can send other people to listen to it. Uh, I know it's an audio form now, but the Lord is on me right now to start doing it live as well on social media. So we will start doing um, live in addition to the Zoom. Uh, and so 
I pray right now that you take this and you apply it. Share this with other folks. Uh, we're going to send a replay out to you via text message and, um, and share it with other people and have them come on the call. Uh, we will be here on Thursday morning at 6 a.m. And um, Shaletta, she, she might be here. I think she's, we're going to be praying over her and her family. They had a, a, a major situation occur uh, in her family. So be praying for her family. Um, let me see. Is she still on here? She's not on here. Okay. Uh, oh, you're on here. Tanya, I'm just praying over you. Um, Dr. Tanya Robertson, just praying over you, over healing for what you just encountered with uh, your son going home to the Lord. Uh, just praying for God to heal your heart, to comfort you, to help you in the grieving for what you just encountered, sis. Uh, just admire that you're on this call, even in having to have gone through that. And I pray that God gives you healing comfort, that he allows you to understand the glory where your son is. The fact that even though we don't understand why or how, how did this happen, that we can look and see that the mission that God had in his life was fulfilled. And just praying that um, just healing power over you, just healing supernatural comfort uh, over your life. So if anyone else has prayers, you guys can um, send them to us so that we can be praying over you on the calls. And, uh, and I, just, I just thank y'all for being here. And so we'll continue to keep you guys updated. The Lord is leading me to get more active in the Facebook group that we have for believers in business. So if you're not in there, I'm going to send you a text. I'm going to start doing some teachings and things inside of there. We'll be doing some streaming inside of there. And so some move happening, you guys, and I'm excited to have you as a part of it. So go and have a great and awesome day. I am signing books today if you ordered a book. If you have not ordered your book yet, go to businessmyministry.com. B-I-Z is myministry.com. You can order your book journal or affirmation cards on there. And then we'll be shipping those out today for the Praying Bold Prayers book. So go and have a great and awesome day. I'll be sending this out to you guys so you can share with other people. And I will see you guys on Thursday morning. Bye-bye, everyone. And thanks again for joining.